Hey everyone, it is Apostle Michelle Peterson. Thank you so much for joining me. And so today is the fourth part of a video that I am doing. It has to do with a message that the Lord gave me a while back, but he wanted me to go into more details and kind of talk about this message, about what he said specifically. So this is the fourth one that I have made. Um, if you guys haven't actually saw the first one, I will uh, link the first one here so you can go check that one out. And I call it a love letter from God uh, to us, to you. Okay, so this part of the message that the Lord gave me gave me talks about him being pure, talks about his uh, character, talks about who he is. And so we'll go ahead and start reading it. Okay, so the Lord says, I am pure. I am pure. And so this is what God said about him. He said, I am pure. And so what I did, I have the definition of pure here and the part that stood out to me. Um, I have it that it says, uh, you know, like uncontaminated. You know, if you have something that is pure or someone that's pure, like if you have a, a newborn baby, you know, they're uncontaminated. They haven't did anything wrong yet. Um, you know, their ancestors may have did things wrong and things was passed down in their blood from the, the sins of the fathers, but they haven't d did anything wrong yet. You know, when we think about someone that's pure, we think about little tiny babies, you know, they haven't sinned yet. But God is pure. And here I like is saying uncontaminated, uh, unmixed. It's not mixed with anything. It's pure. It's not mixed. It's not like a, a, a mixed breed dog or anything. It's a pure bred dog. It's pure. It's not mixed up with anything. Here is saying um, unmixed, unblended. It's not blended with anything. Um, you know, nothing is blended with some something that's pure. It's not blended with anything. It's just pure. Then it has down here, it has free of any contamination. I like that, free of any contamination. It is not contaminated, not even one little speck of uh, something that makes it unpure, you know, uh, defiles it. That's God. He is not contaminated with nothing that is unpure. Okay, then it says clean, clear. Like, I guess, with water. If you have water that is uh, uncontaminated, doesn't have any dirt or anything in it, it will be clear. Then they have fresh, unpolluted, no pollution in it, uncontaminated, like I said, untainted, which I like that, untainted. It hasn't been tainted with, you know, nothing that's uh, defiling, nothing that's nasty, um, wholesome, unaffected, germ-free. And I think that is so cool, like our definition of uh, uh, pure in our dictionary. And so the Lord says here, I am pure. I am pure. Then he goes into a little bit more details that kind of, kind of helps us understand what is he saying when he's pure. He says, I am free from sin. He is totally free from sin. He's not blended like here. It says unblended, unmixed, un uncontaminated unpolluted, untainted. He is not tainted or contaminated or blended or mixed with sin, period. He is totally free from sin. I think that is so cool he said that. And then also he says, I am free from evil. Okay, so God is pure. He's free. He's saying these two things that he is free from. He is free from sin. Okay, that makes him pure. He is free from evil that makes him pure. He doesn't have sin. He doesn't have anything evil in him that makes him pure. Okay. Now us on the earth, we have sin. We have evil things that we have done. We just do, whether it's in our bloodline, stuff that's been passed down to us. Maybe we're a little baby. Maybe we haven't had the chance to act any of this stuff out yet, but it has been passed down to our blood. So in our blood, there there is iniquity and sin and things that are in our blood when we're babies but this is not with God God does not have any of that no sin no evil whatsoever in him totally untainted totally uncontaminated with sin okay so God is free from sin God is free from evil this is what he's saying I am pure I am free from sin I am free from evil okay and the cool thing is that I also looked up the word free. 
uh, our definition, which I like looking into our dictionary to see what, um, how we see certain words that the Lord uses, you know, how we see pure, we see it basically, you know, untainted, uncontaminated, it's not mixed up with anything, you know, so we see it the same way, um, with free, our definition for the word free in our dictionary is not under, not under the control or in the power of another, okay? So God is saying, I am free from these things. Sin does not control God. God is not under the control of sin. God, I mean, sin doesn't have power over God. He is totally free from sin, okay? So free is being under the control. Like if you're not, you know, if you're not free, then that means you are under the control of something or a person. Okay, if you're not free from sin, that means you are still sinning. You're still doing things that are sin um, because you're not free from it yet. When you're free from it yet, you won't do those things anymore. You won't do it. You won't be, it won't control you anymore. You know, um, like when you think about our lives, uh, a lot of times when we come to the Lord or even in our walk with the Lord, we will get totally delivered, totally set free from something where we don't even have the taste to smoke cigarettes anymore. We don't have a taste for alcohol anymore. We don't have that lustful eye anymore. We don't, you know, we don't have the perverted desires anymore. That means you are free from that sin. You're free. It doesn't have a stronghold on you anymore. It doesn't have control over your life anymore. You're free from it. So God is free from sin. Sin does not have any control over him. Um, it doesn't have no power over him. He is totally free from it. Okay, so I like that def definition in our dictionary of being free. The word free is not under the control or in the power of another. Okay, then also the Lord says here um, in the next part, he says, I am holy. I am holy. And um, um, the Lord actually told me exactly what holy is. I know a lot of times we'll think about holy. Uh, we'll think about holy as just living a certain type of way. Long dresses, no makeup, you know, like the holiness churches. Uh, that's what, you know, the natural uh, people see as being holy. But this is actually what the Lord told me holy is. He said, holy is love. Being holy is walking in love. That's what being holy is, you know, walking in love, like your heart just being filled with love, you know, you being uh, able to love and give love and receive love and not closing your heart off to people uh, for whatever reason, uh, just being able to just love. God is 100% holy because he 100%, I mean, he 100% loves no matter what we do, no matter if we reject him, no matter if we are out here worshiping idols and stones and nature, you know, all of these things, worshiping money, God still loves. That is what makes him holy. He still loves. He is perfect in love. He is perfect love. Okay, so he is holy. He says here, I am holy. I think that's so beautiful. And then he says, I am blameless. I am blameless. And also blameless is another word that uh, I wanted to look up just to see what our dictionary says about blameless. Our dictionary says blameless, a person or blameless, someone that's blameless, they are innocent of wrongdoing. They are a to totally innocent of doing anything wrong. Okay. So that is what a person um, is if they are blameless, they didn't do anything wrong, they are totally innocent. If you, if you have charges or something, some type of criminal charges on them and they are found blameless, you know, they didn't, they didn't do any of those things. They're found blameless. So they're innocent, okay, of all those charges. And then down here, it actually goes into a little bit more details. It says, innocent, guiltless, above reproach, in and unimpeachable, in the clear, perfect, virtuous, pure. See, even here in blameless, the word pure is even in blameless. You know, if, if the, our dictionary is even saying a blameless person is a pure person um, or something pure. Okay, faultless, no fault whatsoever, 
didn't do anything wrong. And then here, then here, the last one that I love is squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. That means you have you all have nothing on your record. You don't have nothing um, against you. You haven't did anything wrong. You are totally squeaky clean. That is God. Okay, He is squeaky clean. He is innocent. He is pure. Um, he's virtuous. He's perfect. All of these things. He hasn't did. He hasn't done anything wrong. God is perfect. Okay. So the Lord says here, I am blameless. He is blameless. He's blameless. He's pure. And so the next one here, you guys, the Lord says, I am harmless. He says, I am blameless, harmless, and pure. So he says, he is harmless. And when we think about someone that's harmless, we kind of think about like a, a innocent child or someone that we were not threatened by. You know, we know they won't hurt us. Um, we know that, um, you know, they're a really good person and um, we, we don't have to worry about anything. But, um, you know, you do have <laughs> dangerous animals out there. Um, you do have harmless animals that won't mess with you. Um, but you have animals and people who are dangerous, you know. Um, our dictionary here says about what it says about harmless is not able or likely to cause harm. Not able or likely to cause harm. And then here it has... Uh, I definitely wanted to read this one, but it talks about the venom of certain spiders. It says, the venom of most spiders is harmless to humans. Okay, so that means they can bite you. Most spiders, it says. Not all, but most. That means they can bite you, but you're not going to die. I mean, you know, nothing bad is going to happen to you. You know, their venom, their venom um, is harmless to humans. Most spiders, okay? Then here, they have um, more words on harmless. They have safe, gentle, mild, and wholesome. Okay, so th this, this is our dictionary of these words, harmless. Okay, safe. God is safe. God is safe. We can feel safe with God. You know, he's not going to hurt us. You know, he's not going to destroy us. Now, the thing about um, this is what people get wrong. And I, a lot of people will say that, God is punishing someone. God is killing people. God is taking this away from them. God is doing this. But these are things that are evil things, you know, that they're saying about God, but they're forgetting there's one that comes. He kills, he steals, and he destroys. Okay? That is his character. That is what he does. That's not God's character. God is not a stealer. God is not a destroyer. God is not a killer. He is not. That's not the Bible. The Bible says there's one that comes, he kills, and he steals, and he destroys. That's not God's character. This is God's character. God is harmless. You know, we can feel safe with God. He's gentle. You know, uh, he will protect us. He will love us. We don't have to fear anything with God. He is totally harmless. Just like, you know, that innocent child, that innocent baby that you, you you don't have to be afraid to be around that little tiny little baby he is totally innocent he's harmless he's not even if he hits you i mean it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna really hurt you it's not gonna destroy you or kill you or anything so god is really harmless we have to see him for who he is his character he's harmless now there are consequences for sin and me being in deliverance and i share with people that you know, if you have a legal right, the enemy has to have a legal right. Anything that's bad happening to you, there has to be some type of legal right. It's something that needs to be, you know, worked out, removed from you. Uh, whether it's stuff that's been passed down from the bloodline or what. Or some, something that you have in your heart that you don't even know. Or mindset that needs to be changed. But there's always a legal right. When we are getting attacked, there's always a legal right for something bad to happen. If we were totally walking in a sinless life and walking in love and loving on everybody, you know, and totally keeping your heart free from sin, you know, and walking really, really close to the Lord, and then you're, you're going to be okay, you know. But, you know, there's always some type of legal right uh, that the enemy has to attack us. It's not God attacking us. It's not, you know, things that we have to even see that God has no part in that. You know, um, 
God is like all, everything that I'm reading to you now. This is who He is. This is His character. So if any of if any of uh, if anything in your life is going on that you know you feel like you're under attack, you don't feel safe in a situation. You feel like um, you know uh, everything is crumbling around on you. You can take this this whole list of what God is saying about Himself and just line it up to your situation. Does it have anything to do with um, you um, being attacked or evil or some type of sin or anything like that. If that has to do with it, that means that's not God doing those things to you because he is, he's not going to do any of this stuff, okay? But I love the way he says this. He says that he's harmless, he is blameless, he's holy, he's free from evil, free from sin, and he is pure, okay? Then here he says, everything about me is pure my thoughts are pure and I like the last time when I um in the first video if you guys want to check that out I talked about you know even God's thoughts are pure now a lot of times we sin and we mess up and and we're looking at the Lord like you know God hates me right now you know God is thinking I'm the worst person there is you know right now but God is not thinking about negative stuff about us. You know, yes, he wants us to repent and he will be very honest with us and tell us when we have sinned or we have something in our heart because uh, honesty is love. But he's not just sitting around thinking evil about us. You know, he's not sitting around thinking evil. Even he says here, his thoughts are even pure. His thoughts are pure. His plans that he has for you are pure. And me, the plans that he has for us, are pure that means those plans don't have anything to do with evil okay think about it God's definition of pure is free from sin he doesn't have any plans that has to do with us sinning in them or anything that has to do with sin those are not his plans for us okay he doesn't want us to live a life of sin he wants he wants our life to be free from sin okay and his plans for us they, they don't have anything to do with evil either you know it's nothing evil um, when it comes to his plans for us, for me, there's no evil in his plans for me. Uh, his plans are good for us. His plans are good for you. Um, we do experience evil things. There, it's because we have an adversary here. Um, we have an adversary, but we do have tools. We have things um, that the Lord has given us while we are here that we can overcome this adversary. Uh, but God's plans for us. It's free from evil. It's free from sin. His plans for us is pure. Okay? So you can trust whatever plan God, God has for your life. It is going to be perfect. It's going to be filled with love. It's going to be filled with joy, peace, happiness. You know, it's going to be a great plan for your life. If you're not walking in it right now, just know that that is not His plan. His plan is for you to walk in it. You will walk in it. If you just uh, line up with Him depend on him walk with him get as close as you can to him you will walk in his plan okay we just have to you know we have to get close to God in his plan whatever plans he had laid out for us he'll be able to guide us on that plan perfectly because we're so close to him that he can actually guide us without us going way over here and then him trying to have to try to get us back on you know track so uh, walk with him as close as possible and his plans you will walk in his plans for your life okay then he has here, I am pure. Everything I do is pure. So everything God does is 100% pure, is free from sin, is free from evil, um, is blameless, is harmless because he is pure. So every single thing that he does, when he's doing things in your life, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about anything bad when he's doing stuff in your life okay it says here everything I do is pure so anything that he's doing in your life it's going to be pure it's going to be free from sin it's going to be free from evil it's going to be perfect when he's doing it now I'm not talking about when we're doing stuff and we're thinking that God wants us to do something or the enemy is deceiving us you know having us to to do stuff that's totally against God like he did with Adam and Eve in the garden you know he he knows the word and he will use scriptures to get you doing stuff that, you know, God does not want you to do those things. But everything that the Lord does in your life, it's going to be pure, free from sin. There, there, will, there will not be any sin attached to it, period. He's not going to have you out here sinning. 
You know, he's not going to have you out here doing anything evil. Okay, so anything that he does in your life and for you is going to be totally pure. Then he says here, my heart is pure. My heart is pure. So God's heart is 100% pure. When he sees you, his heart for you is pure. You know, there's no sin, there's no evil in his heart, okay? His, his heart is filled of love. God is 100% love. You know, there's nothing else. God is love. So when he's seeing you, his heart for you is open to you. His heart loves you. You know, his heart is pure. So, like, when we're thinking about God, we can think about, and I like using, like, you know, a child because I have grandkids. And my daughter just recently had a um, my new grandson. He's uh, a few months old. So I kind of think about that because when you when you have grandkids or children or if you have uh, no you know have a baby those babies are really pure like their heart for you and then when they're growing up their parents can do really really bad things and that child will still love you that child will still love you until it starts getting to a place where people may say oh your parents are doing that you know they're bad why are you you know still loving them until something happens that um, you know uh, influence comes in and tells them that that's not right for them to still love you or they should be upset or mad then you know the enemy starts coming into their heart but the children they have that innocent that uh, that innocence that purity that love that God they already have uh, before it gets tainted that their heart is going to be pure towards you they're going to love you even if you are doing evil things. Even if you are, you know, you have a, a child and his parent, uh, they're on drugs and the parents are selling everything that they have, you know, to go get drugs. That child is still going to love that parent. You know, that child is going to want the parent, you know, to do better with their life, but that child is still going to love that parent. So think about it. When you have a pure, innocent child that still loves his parent when they're out doing all this evil stuff, that's a pure heart. That's a good heart. That's a loving heart. God says here, my heart is pure. My heart is pure. So even if you are falling, even if you are sinning, even if you are messing up, even if you just cussed someone out yesterday or you fell and did something that you wasn't supposed to do last night, God's heart is pure. He still loves you. He wants to see you get back up. Repent. Just say, I'm sorry. Get back up and just... You know live another day walk walk with him the next day you know include him on that day the next day so you're not going to fall that day so you can kind of lean on the lord and he will give you strength to be able to overcome whatever that temptation is but he wants to see you get up he doesn't beat you down and 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 you know and just uh, condemn you he doesn't do do that the enemy does that the enemy condemns you and tries to do everything he can possibly do to keep you down but god's heart is pure he wants to see you get up he wants to, he's rooting for you. He's like your cheerleader, rooting for you. Get up, get up. I will help you. Ask me to help you. You know, that's his heart. His heart is pure. That's what a loving heart does. Like I said, you take it back to the baby. That baby is innocent. That baby is pure. Okay. We need to start seeing God more pure like a baby. You know, when, when you kind of see him pure as a baby, and then you can kind of understand who he is because he's more innocent than a child he's more innocent than that baby he has more love than that baby you know he has way more than that he's more perfect he's harmless he's blameless so we need to see him um, more perfect and innocent and loving than a child okay because he is and then here the last part that he talks about he talks about he is love he says love is who I am I am love and God is love he is love and when you think about all of these things that he's describing him, himself about being pure, pure, free of sin, free of evil, holy, blameless, harmless, pure. His thoughts are pure. His plans are pure. Everything he does is pure. His heart is pure. Okay? Pure love. That's who he is. That's who our God is. And we need to see him like that. And if we're going to be like our God, these are things that we're going to have to walk in. We're going to have to be pure. We're going to have to make sure our heart is pure, you guys. 
We got to keep stuff out of our hearts. Whenever, you know, unforgiveness towards people, neg offense towards people, hate towards people, jealousy towards people, strife, you know, wanting to debate and fight all the time and cause chaos and, and offend people. We got to get our, we got to get that type of stuff out of our hearts. Strife really shouldn't be in there. Contention shouldn't be in there. We need to get that stuff out. It doesn't matter if you're right. It doesn't matter if you're right. Don't fight each other. Don't fight your brothers and sisters in Christ. We all have the same spirit. We are hurting the Holy Spirit. I saw a vision um, of this a long time ago. Um, how we hurt the Holy Spirit when Christians fight. If you have the Holy Spirit in you and I have the Holy Spirit in me and we're fighting, the Holy Spirit is the one that's being hurt. He is the innocent one. And I may do a video kind of sharing it with you guys in, in the vision that I saw about this. The Holy Spirit is being hurt. We're grieving Him. We're hurting Him. Because we're fighting and He loves both of us. He's in both of us. That's how the Lord... You know, that's that's how it is. So we have to walk in this. We have to have our hearts pure, free from evil. Um, you know, everything that we're doing, it needs to be out of love for people in God. Don't ever stop loving the people, no matter what they're doing to you. Never stop loving them. Go to the Lord, ask Him to help you still love them anyway. Okay? Because we want to be like our God. He wants us to be like Him. We're His children. We should have some type of, you know, DNA of His. We should look like him. And so this is the way he looks. This is who he is. Okay. So I'm done with this video. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, the Lord wants me to go into just kind of talk about uh, what he said and go into more details. So I will see you guys in part five, I think. All right. God bless.